Hey, welcome. Energy is an amazing thing. And energy sometimes is quite a destructive thing. What is energy? Well, that's a conversation that could last a month. But my experience of energy thus far is that it's free, it's universal, it's abundant. And there is a separation between the human entity, the human body, and this energy. It's separate. We're not one. <clears throat> We're separate. And I'll explain why that is, and you might understand as I, I begin this conversation. <clears throat> the willingness to accept is the first step towards receiving. And I guess there's a, a clever way of doing that by way of prayer. What, what is prayer ultimately? Well, if we define it as a young boy or a girl or a man stood by a grave crying saying, why did it happen? Or somebody sat by a bed of a child praying that they get better. You're basically asking an unknown, invisible entity, source, God, whatever you want to call it, to help. You're invoking something that you know nothing about. And this is where this question is often asked. How do I know if I'm working with good energy? Or bad energy <clears throat> and actually when you stand back and you've worked in this field of work you realize that that's a kind of bizarre question because the energy around us has no positive or negative it is and cannot be defined in any way it just is the energy of source so if you try and break it down in a, a layman term, it is an energy that you can pull from the ether and do what you want with it. So here's the thing. That energy can create yin and yang. It is yin and yang. It's around us. But the energy is always there. You can't create it because it's created. It was always there. So if the energy is always there, then why do people do good things and bad things? Well, when we call for prayer, when we call for energy as healers, we call for it in the state of our being. What does that mean, man? Well, what is it you desire? What is it you want? How do you feel? How are you physically? How are you mentally, emotionally? All of these things are subject to you as a singular human being. On an individual level, the person next to you, if they ask like a prayer, what they receive is going to be different from you. Not because of what's in the ether, not because of the source, not because of the energy, but because what you are and what you're vibrating at, at that given moment. It's true to say what my belief is and truth is, is going to be different from you and how you see my belief is either positive or negative or nothing or dangerous. Whereas, somebody else would see it in a completely different way. So where is the right and wrong? It's only your right. It's nobody else's right. It's just your right. Therefore, 
what this is, and this is what I teach in the Pure Energy Healing course, is that this energy, which doesn't judge, that is always there for whatever we need, as in energy, as in something that will be given to us for what we need to create within ourselves and to give through that energy. So what I'm saying is you receive the energy, what you do with that energy is entirely up to you because that's called free will. Am I making sense or is this completely off? Am I going way out? You know, a lot of people don't see what I see because they haven't worked in the field of work what I see. So let me give you a for instance. There were once two ladies who worked side by side each other and uh, they were giving a healing session to a client. They were both holding their hand out for energy to give to this client. And each of those healers were distributing an energy which was completely different to the client. Completely different. The healing energy went different places and it was a completely different frequency. One was a lot more denser, the other one was a lot lighter. It doesn't mean that, that one was better than the other. They were just different frequencies being given. And many a times a, a, a healer will say, oh, my hand was freezing cold or it was boiling hot. And the client might say, oh my God, I felt freezing when you were healing me. And then the next person who was giving healing, they were sweating or whatever. So you come to understand as an observer, when you are a teacher, a guide, and you're watching these things and you're seeing energy, you realize that this beautiful energy that surrounds us can be used in however we feel, right? So in truth, when people say to me, when you heal, Mark, are you healing with light or dark? Or is it dangerous? I say, well, that energy around us is neutral. It's there, it's source energy. It's there to take and what you do with that is up to you. How you heal yourself, how you behave, how you act, how you use that energy for positive or negative is up to you. So in theory, there's nothing wrong with the planet. There's nothing wrong with the frequency. There's nothing wrong with the source energy. What's wrong is what you do with that energy as a singular human being living in this space suit. But within that is your spirit. And what that space suit does, what your flesh, bones, your brain, your thoughts, your feelings, what you do with that energy is entirely singular to you and like no other. So when I sit down in front of 20 people, 300 people, I tell them I work with light and love. So what I pull and I work with is love, meaning I am love, I am light, because I choose to focus on that energy, in that energy and be that energy, literally. Have I ever pulled anything from the ether and it's been dangerous? Not a chance. Why would Mother Earth give us anything dangerous? The only thing dangerous in this world is human beings telling other human beings to spray or to inject or to do whatever they do, right? But if you leave everything alone, Mother Earth works perfectly. If you don't cut her trees down, she works amazing. And she creates, Mother Nature creates everything that we need in the air, the oxygen and everything, and everything's perfect, we're perfect. Thus the energy in the air is perfect. But what we do with it is ultimately the key to this conversation. And some people don't wanna hear this because it's very easy to push the book and say, that wasn't me, it was something else. <laughs> oh no, it must be something else. Uh, it could actually be you, to be honest. You could be in a, a bad energy place. You could have fear, God forbid. Where does that come from? Everywhere. Everybody's kicking out fear. So you're not doing anything wrong you're just buying into fear and you're worried about things and you're, oh, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Thus you create this energy, you're, you are fearing it. And as you fear it, then you're creating the fear. Makes sense, right? So one of the 
really important roles of a, a true healer and guide is to guide a singular human being in the belief and the knowing and the practice, which is important, practice makes perfect in the sense of if I, if you keep do, doing something, keep going, keep doing it and believing in it and believing in it and trusting in it, trusting it, you create that energy that is given to you in that manner. The most powerful way to do this is to become completely empty as a vessel. Thus, the energy that pours through you and into your client is pure healing. That's ultimately the nirvana of healing. But along the way, we kind of mess it up sometimes because of our thoughts. Oh, am I doing this right? Should I be healer? Is this working? Am I getting the right energy? Is it really? Re is it real? Is it so? We we corrupt the actual perfect flow. But in time, as healers, we learn to understand that the only thing that corrupts anything is ourself, our fears, worries. Does this make sense? <laughs> am I going off on one of you? Like I said, I could talk about this for weeks. So ultimately, if you say to me, what is light? You know, do you work with the darkness? Do you work with the light? Well, that in my understanding is, are you light or dark? Do you live in fear? Do you live in anger? Do you live in resentment? Do you live in rage? Do you live in bitterness? Do you live in revenge, revenge, revenge? Or do you live in love and compassion? kindness, uh, empathy, do you live in forgiveness, do you live in all those beautiful sacred energies. So if I'm not in those energies and I'm feeling one of those fear energies, then it makes sense that there's no point pulling that energy in because I can easily snowball what I'm feeling. So this part of the pure energy healing online course is never do your work if you're feeling bad. Makes sense, right? Don't paint a picture if you're, you're, not, if you're feeling down and sad <laughs> because the picture's gonna be down and sad. <laughs> Don't pick a hammer up if you're angry <laughs> or a gun. <laughs> so I hope this makes sense. Um, to you in the way of the universal energy. Now, you could be screaming, saying, oh no, it's rubbish, people do bad things and they do, yeah, they do bad things. And sometimes things take over them. Yeah, that's true, that's true. There's a lot of things going on. But what I'm saying is this is one aspect of a whole uh, trillion gazillion aspects of life and what's going on in the energy. Because yeah, there's lots of other things happening. The spirit trapped in between two worlds. There's energies that try to connect with us and, um, you know, ultimately we get worried and fear and we think that it's all demonistic and bad like they used to do in the old days. The, you know, a, a long, long time ago, I don't know if you've ever studied it, and I haven't studied hard, but my understanding of illness wasn't illness, but it was demons. Basically, demons were inside you and they had to clear the demons. That's why these voodoo do this, they all believe it's demons, right? So we have different takes of things. My take is what I've learned through my thousands of clients, sat watching and healing. That's, that's all I know. I don't read books. I don't watch videos because I don't read and I'm, I haven't got a very good um, uh, span of attention. But stick me on a healing bed, uh, stick me next to a healing bed, stick me with clients, stick me around um, practitioners and I've got I, I'm just in my own world that's it this is my world and I go relaxed I go into a deep and I can stay there for hours no problem but modern day living I'm, I just I just don't want it I don't want to be out there I don't want to be involved in that I don't want to be involved in chaos mayhem fear worry in this room and when I'm doing online courses I'm like I could be here for a year and it feels like a week so it depends on what energy you want to work with inside you. So what do I want to work with today? Well, just let me feel. I feel kind of balanced today. I feel kind of motivated today. Like I want to share lots of things with truth and love. I want to share things. I want to, I want to speak about good things. I want to help people feel better. 
well, then I'm going to take some of that energy. Tomorrow, I feel angry because I've seen, you know, a child ill because of what's happening now. I'm seeing pain and suffering around me. Going to do some healing? Uh, probably better not. <laughs> I'll leave it today. So then there comes to the other part. Well, then if, you're, if, if that's the case then, Mark, how can you, how do you heal yourself if you're, if you're feeling bad? Well, the intention is different there. The intention is like wanting to heal somebody. You see, the interesting thing about all of this is that when you love a child, I'll give you a for instance. I had a phone call and I, I've had these many, many over the years that a, a child was in deep state of pain, whether it was they were uh, had a car accident, they were all uh, machined up, whether they'd gone into a coma, and the client would ring up and be screaming, and um, and and I, I'm I'm saying, hang on, just stop a second, because the screaming, I, I understand, get it completely. I'd scream if there, anything happened to my daughter, but that screaming doesn't help. That's a release, of course, but we need to calm down, and we need to now, because doing all of that isn't helping anything, right? So that's why I used to say to my client, look, the screaming actually adds to the energy that is kicking to your daughter right now. They feel it because we can, we're connected. We feel our, that's why you sometimes think, oh, there's something wrong with my mom or something wrong with, because you feel them, right? Makes sense. Okay. That, that's there. It exists if you attune to it. So stop that and let's now fix your daughter. Okay. That's all I'd say. Let's just get a bet better and well starts now. So clear all that. Now, look at me, or if they were in my uh, studio, or I was on the phone. We are now going to fully focus on your daughter being well and up and running around and happy. And I want you to now go back to everybody who you screamed at and tell them the same thing. I saw miracles within a space of a day, a day, and sometimes maybe two or three days, but they would be back up and they'd be fine. And the client would call me and say, oh my God, she's fine. And I'd say, exactly. Would, uh, there is another question here, would that child have got better if everybody was in a panic? Well, I don't know, because I've never been in that situation, because when somebody's asked me to help, I've changed them from feeling that energy of sadness, anger, and lost, and everything's wrong, and why me, to they're gonna be fine. And I'll give you another, uh, for instance, as well. There's a guy who lives above here at the moment, and he works as, um, uh, he works with can cancer patients, which I didn't know. I only just met him the other day. And he said, oh, hi, you've got the Jeep. I said, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I just got it. He says, yeah, nice Jeep. I said, yeah. And he said, uh, oh, he says, uh, and we started talking. And I said, so what do you do for a living? He says, oh, I work uh, on um, uh, cancer wards. So he works with cancer patients. We ended up talking about this. And he's like, with what's going on now, it's terrible and all that. And I'm, I'm agreeing, I'm saying, yeah, I know. So we end up chatting and I said, I said to him, just one thing. I says, can I ask you a question? He said, yeah. I said, when you walk into the ward, do you know which patients are gonna live and which are gonna die? And he looked at me and he said, absolutely. And I said, I'm a healer too. And uh, I saw that as well. And the reason why we see it is because we know that nine times out of 10, the client has already made their mind up and have created that very illness within the body by what they've pulled in and created. So there is something in this, okay? There is something in it. So I wanna end on a really happy note. Whatever you do, say it with love do it with love do it with the most beautiful white light or purple light whatever you want to call it but that energy whenever you want to heal say to your body my body is healing never talk about illness talk about health and well-being say heal i am healing i do not have disease i am healing pull it in and heal do you see what i'm saying I mean, it's so simple, it's unreal, but you know what? It's damn powerful and so precise in energy. And it works. The dual energy of what you pull and ask for does make a difference. Does it help all the time? Not all the time, but
But does it make a difference? I believe it does. And I believe in my whole heart, whenever I start a circle, whenever I do a shamanic ritual, whenever I'm anywhere in the world performing, the first thing I always call for is beautiful energy, perfect light, pure energy healing. That's why I called this particular field of work pure energy healing. I had people getting angry with me saying, don't use that word, it's too good for you. And I'll say, but I'm striving for it to be as pure as possible. I'm not saying it is pure, but I know that if I say it's pure and I'm asking for pure energy, what I'm saying is I want to be pure. I want to be the most beautiful person. No negativity, no bad thoughts, only light, love, kindness. Do you get it? So there's no ego here. It's just trying my best, doing my best and always being aware that my body has to be in good shape and form. And on a final note, if I'm not feeling well, then I will start to meditate and heal my body in a way of asking myself, what is wrong? So I'll, I'll, I'll scan my body and say, why am I feeling that way? And then look at that and then clear it by forgiving it, by loving it, by finding the answer to why I'm feeling like that and how I can resolve it. So I basically give myself um, a reading. I basically read for myself. Okay, why am I feeling like that? Okay, right, what is that feeling? That feeling was because of that person said that. Okay, who is that person? Actually, that person's a lovely person. Could that person have been in a really bad place because they're going through a terrible moment and they didn't really mean it? Yeah, I forgive them, I love them, it's not their fault. Did, did that person say what they said to me? And, and okay, they said that you are, um, you are a nasty person. Okay, am I a nasty person? Think about it. Be honest, am I? Have I been nasty this week? Have I been nasty last week? Have I done anything nasty? No. Okay, so they didn't mean that and I know I'm not nasty. So they're in a bad place and most likely they've said that because they're probably in a nasty place. So I forgive them, I love them, no problem. So by doing that, by resolving internal issues that we hold on to, which most of us don't, and that's called unresolved files, which store in the mind, which is like a really dark gray matter of energy. And it can run down your eyes and stress your eyes so you don't see properly. It can run down to your jaw and make it tight so you, or you get locked jaw or your jaw kills when you open it. You can feel a tension. It runs down your throat and sometimes you can't speak properly and it feels awful. Then it runs down to your heart and makes it feel heavy and you don't feel like you've got any energy. And then it goes into your stomach and sits there and causes deep pain and suffering as much as uh, uh, problems with below, which causes all sorts of stuff. And then you have IBS and all that kind of thing. So really, every now and again, taking a little bit of time and asking yourself those questions and working on them, trying to find a solution to all of those things and not to fight back with other people's issues and weaknesses and, and and sadness and then looking at myself as why am I angry why am I jealous why am I bitter why am I upset by looking at all of them and then one by one take 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 that string and say okay let me look at that okay that's fine now I, I often used to use the abbreviation or the terms or, or the analogy sorry the analogy of my mum's um, uh, jewelry box there was always one pile of jewelry all, all knotted up that's like we we are like that in our mind okay so we look at it and we grab it and we start to try and undo it for our mums and say, we're just going to make this nice. And then we get fed up because we can't do it. The reason why is because we're not focused on one thing. We just want it all to be fixed straight away. And that doesn't work. We normally get exhausted because we can't fix it. There's too much going on to fix. But if you focus on one, that yellow uh, necklace, which is plastic, and just pull it out there. Stop, don't, don't, no, I want to go, I want to fix it all. No, 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 just keep going on that one necklace. <laughs> keep going, keep going. And then, ah, there's one, resolved. And that's how we should do it with emotions. Okay, I think I've talked enough today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I hope it serves you well. Love you all. Hope to see you on the 5th to the 8th of August for a most amazing, magical four days of your life. I'll be there online, interactive with you. And after those four days, I guarantee you, it will change your life. Love you all.